Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Healthy Lifestyle Show. My name is Bonnie Iris, and I am your host here. And today we have an amazing episode here for you guys. So we are faced with many choices in our life, and oftentimes we choose what seems simple and efficient at the time, but, you know, may not be the most desirable outcome. And it has become routine when we do go to the doctor's office for them to just prescribe us with various medications. And without, you know, doing our own research for if it's the most beneficial for our bodies. So when was the last time you asked for an alternative remedy, like something that's natural for your body? Recently, I have been researching alternative medicines as an all-natural choice. More and more, I see the importance of turning to herbal medicines to cure the body naturally. Although, it is still very important to discuss with your doctor, of course, of these remedies to ensure that you are getting healed properly. But I do encourage that you um, do your own research as well. So our guest speaker today is Tara McKee. She is the best-selling author of Cured by Nature, a soul singer, and global motivational speaker. She is also the founder of The Organic Life. Um, She's also been honored as Woman of the Year in San Diego's Most Admired CEOs in 2017. She also loves to travel the world as a speaker and activist, inspiring people to make bold and brave moves to take action to live their dreams and create a more sustainable and empowered world. So with that, I would love to welcome our dear friend, Tara McKee. Hi, Tara. It's it's so wonderful to have you here on our Healthy Lifestyle Show. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, wonderful. Yes, I am beyond excited as well uh, to have you on the show. As within the past year, I have also like really started to change my lifestyle around like um, with eating habits and my fitness routine and just my overall wellness. So I would love to hear and sh- uh, a bit that you can share about your wellness journey and how you kind of started the organic life. Of course, yeah. So I was actually put on my first pharmaceutical at 13 years old. Um, I had had some pretty traumatic family experiences growing up, being adopted by my grandparents, seeing my mom battle a drug and alcohol addiction. And so I was put on my first drug at 13, basically to deal with what I had seen growing up. And by the time I was 24, I was on 14 different pharmaceutical drugs. Um, Mm -hmm. I could barely function. A lot of the drugs that I was prescribed Prescribed had um, side effects that would then, you know, send me back to the doctor. I would get put on more drugs. So I really, despite the fact that I'd gone to talk therapy, despite the fact that I had learned other coping mechanisms, um, pills were kind of just continuing to be thrown on me. And I didn't, the more pills that were thrown on me, the less I was given any other option on how to deal with my health. So that basically came to a breaking point um, six years ago. And I decided to come off all my medication, all 14 pharmaceutical drugs, cold turkey. Wow. Um, which I do not recommend because I could have died many times, um, which I outlined the whole journey in the book and, and the decisions that led me to get there because it, it definitely wasn't just one thing. It was different events, different um, things that led up to my decision to, to come off all the drugs. But I had realized at a certain point, and we all have this really, was that, you know, they were – a really bad habit that I had not um, addressed that I had. Yeah. And they were a bad habit that had addressed none of my problems. They hadn't solved anything. They'd made a lot of my life worse. So mm-hmm. um, for me personally, they, that was just something that I needed to figure out um, why I was choosing this method for healing. It wasn't really about getting rid of the drugs. It was more about figuring out what was best for myself. So I came off the drugs cold turkey six years ago. And since then, I've been treating myself naturally, um, figuring out, you know, what I what I needed to treat myself for and what I didn't, what labels I could throw away and, mm-hmm. and what I really did need to address and support within myself and my own health. So I've just been, you know, self-experimenting mm-hmm. for the last 
six and a half years and um, a lot of it's gone really well. So I, you know, I live now to basically share that knowledge with other people through my books and my work and my blog. And I'm super excited to do that today with you too. Yeah, well, that is quite a story. And especially um, at such a young age, starting with um, prescription medication, and then just kind of like getting them thrown at you, keep, keep adding to the list. Um, It kind of starts being like a routine. And it's would definitely be hard to kind of break that habit and that um, conditioning built up in, in the mind over that such a long time. Yeah, it was, at the, you know, by the time I came off my drugs, it was, had been, you know, over half my life that this was presented to me as the way to deal with things. And, you know, by doctors, by medical professionals, by people that I felt like I could trust, but um, that perhaps weren't really privy to who I truly am as a person and what really works for me. You know, like, that's what I really decided in, in this whole thing was that, Um, when this journey started was that I needed to figure out what worked for me, like clearly Mm -hmm. what other people had decided was, could possibly help me had it helped. So I needed to figure out my own way. And I think we all need to do that was really what I, my, my take home message now that it's been almost, you know, six and a half, seven years, it's, it's more and more clear that we all, you know, there's no like, one big band-aid that helps everybody yeah. um, the way they kind of portray it in western medicine so yeah and everybody's body has different reactions and and we have to listen to ourselves right and a lot mm-hmm. of the time the f- pharmaceutical companies they just kind of throw you these medications because that's how they make money <laughs> so yeah yeah. So yeah. a lot of people don't realize the doctors and suffer. They're very invested in these drugs for various reasons. Some of them have literally, you know, helped to make sure the drugs themselves existed. Some of them get payoffs. Some of them truly believe that this is how you help everyone. That's wow. what they were taught. So mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I did pre-med. I understand that it's part of the system that doctors are just taught that medication is the front line for treatment, but I just don't believe that that solves the whole equation. I've never seen that solve the whole equation for anybody. Yeah. And the more I do this work, the more I realize that it, it just doesn't. It might be a piece of the puzzle, but it's not the whole thing. Totally. And especially with like all the natural and organic products out there that the earth has given us, you know, it's kind of funny how, um, you know, scientists and chemists and whatever will create something when we have everything that nature can give us. Well, you can't patent nature, right? Right. So they're, they're paid to create something that you can patent, that you can name, that you can market and sell um, and upsell. There are many companies that have done the same thing, but with flowers and herbs and, and they're kind of doing the opposite where because they're all competing with each other, they have to lower the price and these things Mm. that really can help you are only like $5. And I think that's why people don't give them a fair chance because Mm. they're not super expensive and your doctor didn't tell you to take them, but that doesn't mean they don't work and they're not effective. That's true. Yeah. People need to start educating themselves. So um, I'm curious, like, how did you keep yourself motivated, especially in those tough times? Like when you first kind of, you know, went cold Turkey off that meditation, um, medication, but through that lifestyle change, just, um, keep persevering through it all. Um, I, I love learning honestly. And to me, this is just like the biggest thing I could learn was myself and what works for me and what works for my health. And I was motivated because, you know, I think we all have that voice in us that wants to do the right thing. And mine just got too loud to ignore. And I Mm -hmm. couldn't, um, I couldn't just sit by and watch my life happen anymore. I had lost my best friend to suicide early in that year. Mm -hmm. I had in deciding to come off my medication, you know, I'd had a little bit before that happened, I'd had a little bit of, you know, a a breakdown in her loss, and I had gotten suicidal. And, um, but it actually made me make some, some of the healthiest decisions I've ever made in my life. I mean, I ended up a very toxic, abusive, physically abusive relationship that I'd been in for three years, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I didn't, I mean, the dude had tried to kill me, and I hadn't left. And 
all of a sudden I had this like kind of newfound willpower to live and not only to live, but to make the best out of my own life. So yeah. once I started doing that, other things kind of rapidly fell into place. And, you know, I, I had had these, you know, I'm a big reader and I'd had these books on my shelf about natural healing and plants and stuff for years and years and years. I don't even know where I got them from, probably like <laughs> my neighbor's garage or something wow. when I was a kid. And I'd never read it. So wow. I never picked up the books and actually read them. So now that I had this like this kind of revelation of like I'm gonna be the best me I can be, okay, the first thing for me that's natural since I'm reading every day is okay, what books on my shelf were just begging to be read? And some of those natural healing books were like the first things I picked up. Wow. And it was like right there in front of me. Here's your answer to your anxiety. Here's your answer to your depression. Here's your answer to your pain. Here's your answer to your insomnia. And I'm reading it and I'm like, no way. Like it's, it's that <laughs> feeling you get when you know that, you know, <laughs> things are starting to line up for you. <laughs> wow. And synchronicity is just starting to, to really show her hand and play a part in your life. That was one of the first ways that that happened for me was I just started to pick up these books and I'm, you know, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be in pain and I, I used to take fentanyl, which is, um, it's a drug that I used to in functional patches, which are actually one of the most like, dangerous drugs because yeah. it's 100 times more powerful than morphine, mm -hmm. which means it's 200 times more powerful than heroin, oh, and yeah. it goes directly into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So I, was, I went from literally chewing on those, which you're not supposed to do, <laughs> um, <laughs> to you know, not doing anything for, for pain, and I was lost, and I, I used to be in pain I really couldn't function and I didn't know that there was another way out and like within days of coming off my medication for pain I picked up these books and I found valerian and I found skullcap and I found blue vervain and I found a california poppy and things that really if I just take a few drops of those every day in my tea in the morning I'm great I didn't even need to learn anything else I mean mm -hmm. I have since then but yeah. those are still some of like my OG go-to plants and they're one of the first things that I that I learned about when I decided to make this change so that's what I tell everybody once yeah. you really are willing and your heart is willing and your soul is willing and open it comes to you you know things you totally. really didn't even know were there so that was one of my first just signs it's like the awe <laughs> moment the universe was speaking to you and it was there for yeah. a while and it was finally like yes was, I'm ready <laughs> okay I'm ready I'm finally ready <laughs> wow that's so that's yeah. such a cool story I love it it's like the law of attraction yeah. right there almost yeah really. yeah so what does like the organic life mean to you then so to me, organic, actually, when I started The Organic Life, it was about coming back to my true self. And that's what, how I try to explain it to people is it's not a label on a product or food, although those things are great to have mm -hmm. incorporated into your life. I do eat 100% organic, all my products that I use. You know, if you read my blog, you know, I try to stay as clean as I can. But to me, the point really is balance. So... Mm -hmm. Is, and it's about finding out who we truly are and what balance looks like for us. So that is what the organic life means and what I try to bring home in, in the blog and in my work and my books because mm -hmm. um, I just think that's what's really important. It's not about perfection or whatever some idea of perfection is for people um, or about a certain, you know, lifestyle. I think it's just about figuring out who we really are and what really makes us happy and makes us tick and what gets us up in the morning and gets mm -hmm. us excited about life. Yeah, that's great. Being authentic to ourselves also, like um, yeah. finding our passions and being true. Yeah. I like yeah. That. Cool. So do you uh, like have some advice for people that want to start living a more organic type of lifestyle? If they, they haven't really, um, you know, made the first steps to the, to going in that direction. Yeah. Well, you know, organic in the, in the way that, that we just discussed, I would say there's two ways to do it. You know, I always tell people be grateful for things before they come to you. So just yes. start to live in, in a grateful mindset before 
anything changes because trust me, things will start to change way more rapidly and way more in your favor if you're already grateful for the things that you, that haven't happened to you yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and two, I think just finding, finding blogs, finding books, finding content that aligns with what you want your life to look like. So for me, like I always tell people as far as changing your lifestyle, if it's something you have done before, if it's like, oh, you want to lose weight or you want to get to a certain way to look or, or something that resonates with you or somewhere you've been in your past, you know, find one picture or find one journal entry or find one day where you can choose that and say, okay, that's my goal of where I want to get to or where I want to get back to or where Mm -hmm. I want to get back to feeling like. Um, not 50 pictures, not 50 <laughs> different people who aren't you, you know what I mean? Because you're just never going to really attain that. And then I feel like if you haven't done it before, if this is a brand new experience and you want to try a new kind of lifestyle to um, find, you know, five people that you can reach out to, maybe somebody with a blog, somebody whose Instagram you really admire, something And just kind of follow along with those five people, like, you know, check in a few times a week or something, read their blog, try to get inspired by what they're doing instead of, you know, getting down about, you know, looking at other people who are super fit or Mm -hmm. go to the gym every day or whatever. Like, that's not realistic for everybody. I understand that completely. So I think just finding people who resonate with the lifestyle that you want and then reaching out to them like I try to tell people I answer every single email I answer every dm like I'm super into connecting with people and most bloggers and most authors are that's like why we write so if somebody has a blog you really admire if they have an instagram you really admire if there's somebody but you know narrow it down don't just like you know torture yourself over everyone who looks like a model on instagram because there's Photoshop and Facetune, and they don't really look like that, so don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> totally. <laughs> but um, I would say just like find people that you admire and and um, see what they do. There's really no shame in it. I don't think it's like copying people. I definitely I give a lot of nod to a lot of books and a lot of people and a lot of quotes and stuff that really resonated with me when I was going through some of my hardest times in my own book and in my own work. Um, because none of us do it alone. Everyone's, mm-hmm. you know, kind of living off the heels of something someone else has done. Half the stuff around you was created, you know, probably 100% of the stuff around you was created by other people. So I think using other people's creativity and inspiration and what's made them healthier and a better person is is there to inspire us. So mm-hmm. that's my advice. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. And everyone's so interconnected, especially with the internet and the web and all the social media. So it's so Mm -hmm. simple to like make that connection with people and reach out and, and whatnot. Also like, um, uh, I've created like vision boards before and I, I found that those yes. work really well. Um, it's it's yes. super cool when you actually like put something on a poster and then it, uh, it becomes the like reality. It's like, whoa. And that's kinda, like, <laughs> holy, this works, you know, it's just kind of like, um, you know, vision, envision yourself there almost and have gratitude before. I think that's super important. Yeah. Yeah, I love vision boards. I was just in Forbes and I was looking through an old journal and I just shared on my Instagram stories the other day that I had written Forbes on like, you know, a list of goals that I had a yeah. few months ago. I've been writing Forbes on that list for a while now. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you know what I mean? You write it down enough and here it is. So mm-hmm. I just wanted to, you know, that's one of those same things of like it is pretty trippy to go back from a few weeks ago and be like, this was on my goals list and now it's on my wall. Yeah. <laughs> um it's great. It's a great feeling. It is. It's it is a great feeling. And in 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 more inspiring for you to achieve whatever you want. Like if you put something whatever you want. Yeah, it's like the universe will at, will listen as long as you ask, right? Yep, it listens to us regardless whether it's positive, negative, whether it's something we want or something we don't want. If you focus on what you don't want over and over and over again, that's what you're attracting too. So yeah. people wonder why they get what they worry about. It's because that's what you're thinking about all the time. Yeah, that's true, and it's uh, I've seen people go through that as well. Just um, yeah, positive mind states are key. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So I know that you've also kind of um, work um, towards a healthy lifestyle in the active, keeping active, and you also kind of have your own um, fitness routines. So one of my questions was like, how do you become like your own personal trainer for yourself? Just keep that motivation and, you know, inspire yourself to work out and whatnot. Yeah, well, I think that, so my fitness plans are all designed to be done from home. You don't have to go to a gym. They don't require any equipment. Um, some of them, even you can, you know, I, I say you can add soup cans as weights or weights <laughs> if you have them, but you don't have, need to go out and buy anything. Um, it's all meant to be done from home because I'm really not a gym person. It's yeah. always been pretty intimidating for me to, like, go be in front of other people when I'm at my most vulnerable, which is when... I'm working out and active and exercising, I feel. So um, for me, though, it, it was really about not wanting to be in pain anymore. I realized when I walked around and I worked out and I stretched and I focused on and gave attention to my body, even just doing, you know, a five minute warm up and then a few moves here and there or splitting it up into a few times a day, I felt so much better than when I didn't or even mm -hmm. if I just took a walk or, or a hike or something like focusing on the things that you want to improve um, and doing that from the comfort of your own home is mm -hmm. like one of the best feelings I think ever so I wanted to bring that experience to other people so I designed my fitness plans and it seems to really resonate with people too because you can do them inside you can do them outside um, and they don't require anybody else having to be there. And uh, you can, you know, open them on your cell phone and just kind of pop them out anytime you want. So mm -hmm. I was doing it this morning. I like to just reference some of my plans every once in a while. Of like, because I put them in order of really like skill level and what's easiest and a warm up and versus like when you have to rest. Mm -hmm. So I'll pop them open and just be like, okay, what do I do next? Because <laughs> um, I know that I put them in the best order in my plans. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't always do them in that order. So, um, and it definitely helps this morning. I was like, okay, core tightening now. Great. <laughs> so it's yeah. just handy to have them there. It's not expensive. Um, and it seems that it's my way of kind of giving back and helping people not only to tone up, but to help with, with pains and aches and things like that, that I know can be so debilitating. Mm -hmm. I think that's great that you have that as an um, additional feature because a lot of like, a lot of people don't like going to the gym for that reason, or they feel ashamed or just like the motivation to actually get to the gym is like more difficult than actually working out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that too and I always feel like I'm like go, like going somewhere like when I go to the gym and when I work out at home I feel like I can just do it in my pajamas and I can relax I can do it in my bathing suit if it's a million degrees outside or yeah. whatever and I don't you don't have people you know just vying for the best selfie in front of the mirror you're trying to look at yourself in or whatever yeah so totally maybe I just don't like other people but I <laughs> I know I love people I just um I just really like being able to do it you know at my own pace on my own time and the motivation really I'm I'm pretty self-motivated to begin with and I mm -hmm. think as you get older and you realize things your metabolism doesn't quite work the same and you're not as fast as you used to be and stuff that alone is enough motivation for me to to get up and you know make sure I can still move tomorrow yeah that's awesome yeah that's funny um well um I'm uh, we like to always like leave our viewers with like a lifestyle challenge that um, you can, oh. um, if you can think of anything that you think um, either would benefit them in the mind state or the active, healthy lifestyle or eating habits, just like a little lifestyle. Oh my God, totally. So my favorite little challenge actually is to listen to yourself for mm -hmm. the next three weeks. And I know that sounds like really weird or selfish or something, but I just mean like, listen to your body, listen to what you really, you really want, listen to what, when, you know, your, how you're breathing, when you're getting tense, what you're craving, you know, food wise, exercise wise. Um, and just ask yourself a few questions every day mm -hmm. about if your needs are being met, if you're, if you're truly emotionally satisfied and, what you can do every day in small ways to start getting there. A lot of people are so ruled by their 
outside circumstances, their relationships, their jobs, their financial issues, mm -hmm. their quote unquote, you know, we all have problems. Um, and I feel like just getting back to listening to your body, listening to what you really want, listening to what you really want your life to look like, mm -hmm. which we just don't do enough of. And that's why goals get lost and, and things get put off for sometimes years and years at a time. I mean, I've done more in the last six years than I did in the 25 years before that. So mm -hmm. there's no, you know, there's no stopping you from whatever you want to do. It's never, ever, ever too late. But I feel like just getting in the right mindset and starting to listen to yourself and um, just being more positive and more self-loving in all of your thoughts, there, that would be my challenge to you because yeah. it's a challenge for me every day. I still have to practice it and yeah. uh, it never, it never ends. So that's for sure. The mindful, well mindfulness out. challenge. I love that tip and that challenge mm -hmm. because I've um, kind of started a practice of myself as well. Meditation. And um, I've actually almost come up to a year now without alcohol and it was very difficult Yay. at first. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I recall this one day and I was just like driving home or I think it must've been a bad day. Cause I was just like, Oh, I really just want like to drink some beer or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I went into yep. like the why of that feeling or that thought. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what, why do I want this? And I was like, well, it's because I'm feeling depressed, you know, or I'm feeling sad. Yep. And I was just like, and then I was just like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. You know, I was like, um, just to come to that kind of acknowledgement of why I thought that and just. That's amazing. Cause a lot of people don't go for the why they go for the beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just go, a lot of, yeah. They don't ask themselves. And most people who drink alcohol are actually thirsty. They need to be yeah. drinking water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's true. People, before you open up the beer, drink a glass of water and see if that doesn't satisfy your cravings for wanting to drink a beer. You know yeah. what I mean? Cause sometimes we really are just freaking thirsty we don't even want alcohol yeah. so or we're just sad or whatever we some feeling has gotten triggered that was solved by beer at some point mm -hmm. our brains think which it wasn't or you wouldn't continue to be craving this beer right right so it's just so silly how we do we are kind of just automatically answering to these cavemen mm -hmm. like signals that go off in our brain and we don't ask why so I yeah. really I think that's great yeah Wonderful rewiring the brain perfect <laughs> um, thank you so much for um sharing these tips with us and uh, the no knowledge of the organic life i truly really enjoyed this as well thank you bonnie thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed it too Wonderful. I had such a lovely time talking with Tara today. And for all the listeners out there, I would love for you guys to share some stories with us. Um, if your experiences watching the mind or, you know, what triggers you guys and how you've kind of, you know, started your healthy lifestyle journey. So yes, please comment and share on this link here provided. Also, I would love to share with you guys our Healthy Lifestyle Meals app. Um, it's where you can do all your healthy, balanced meal planning so that you can ensure that you're getting the proper nutrients, minerals, and the quantity of calories, protein in your daily diet to make sure that, yeah, you're having a balanced diet. And then you can plan it all for the week, the day, the month. Super simple and easy. There's over 5,000 balanced meals plans to choose from, and you can customize them to your preferences. So, if you don't want any meat or cheese, you can just say nope, nope, and it will come up with um, meal plans for you based on your special needs. So yes, you can go uh, discover that at healthylifestylemeals.com slash trial. And yeah, we have a trial going on right now, 30-day trial, only $1.00 can cancel any time or anything like that but yeah check it out and we'll see you next week